Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Brothers and sisters, comrades and friends, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I congratulate each and every one of you, hundreds of you, who have braved this inclement weather to join with all of us here this evening to defend the honor of the Muslims, to defend the honor of Islam, and to defend the honor of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Let me tell you that I'm going to speak to you tonight from my heart and for whatever I say, there is no power on this earth will make me apologize or withdraw. I make that point on the subject of freedom of speech because the last speech I gave from these steps in which I criticized the state of Israel, Zionism, and its murderous rampage in Gaza, I was questioned under caution by the West Yorkshire police. So there's freedom of speech for some people on some issues, but not for others on other issues. I want to say right at the beginning what the priest so powerfully just said. No person, no human being should be subjected to violence, still less death for anything that they have said, written or drawn. So we condemn utterly the murder of 17 people in the events in Paris. But we will not allow this Charlie Hebdo magazine to be described as a kind of lovable, anarchic, fun book of cartoons. These are not cartoons. These are not depictions of the prophet. These are pornographic, obscene insults to the prophet and by extension 1.7 billion human beings on this earth. And there are limits. There are limits to free speech and free expression, especially in France, of all European countries. In France, it is forbidden for Muslim women to dress as they please. They can wear as little as they like, but they cannot wear as much as they like. In France, it is illegal to deny the Holocaust, which massacred millions of Jews in the 1930s and 1940s. It is illegal, it should be illegal, because of the harm and hurt and offense which it causes to the millions of Jews in the world. But how come it's illegal to hurt and offend Jews in France, but it's some kind of freedom of speech to offend and obscene pornography be drawn and published now in the millions of copies against Muslims. That's hypocrisy, not democracy. Shame on the government of France. It wasn't free for the Muslims in Paris last summer who wanted to march through the center of their own capital in support of the people of Gaza and were forbidden by law and thousands of riot police from doing so. This is hypocrisy. This is 
double standards. Now, the onslaught, the backlash against Muslims in France and in Britain is well underway. In the last 10 days, more than 60 attacks against Muslims and their places of worship and their businesses have been reported. Well, reported is one way of describing it. Yeah. Mosques have been bombed. Grenades have been thrown. Bullets have been fired. Fires have been started. And last night, a Muslim in front of his wife and child had his front door smashed down and stabbed 17 times and to death. He was murdered in front of his wife and child last night by someone shouting crazed hatred of Islam. I don't know if you've seen that reported much. I have not. So ask not for whom the bell tolls, for the bell tolls for you and everyone in this insane confrontation which has been begun and which is continuing. British mosques have been attacked, British Muslims have been attacked. And I say we have to bring this confrontation to an end before more and more people are consumed by it. They say that some atrocity was going to happen in Belgium. The head of the British security services has said that such an atrocity is almost inevitable in Britain. God forbid. But if such a crime were to be committed, it would have been committed by the criminals who committed it, not the two million people in Britain who profess their religion as Islam. When Anders Breivik murdered more than 70 people in Norway in support of his crazed campaign for a monocultural Christian Europe, that's what he said. That's what he wrote. Nobody blamed all Christians. Nobody demanded that Christians get down on their knees and apologize for the actions of a fascist murdering criminal. And neither should they be doing so to the millions of Muslims in Britain. Nobody blamed all white people for the crimes of Breivik. Nobody blamed all doctors for the crimes of Dr. Shipman. Crimes are carried out by criminals, not by their co-religionists or people of the same color or nation as them. We cannot avoid this point. At least I will not avoid it. All over the world tonight, Muslims are being bombed and shelled and droned and killed. And they're almost always being bombed, droned, shelled and killed by the same Western countries and their ally Israel that are marching for freedom on the streets of Paris. That march last weekend was led by some of the worst tyrants, dictators, criminals, mass murderers that could be assembled anywhere in the world. Netanyahu was waving for his election at the front of that demonstration. The representative of Saudi Arabia was on the front of the march when his government is lashing people for blogging. The governments of Egypt, Egypt, which has jailed hundreds of journalists 
including two Western journalists working for Al Jazeera. The military junta of Egypt was at the front of the march with Netanyahu and Holland protesting in favor of freedom of speech. These are hypocrites, these people, and we should have nothing but contempt for them. My last point is this. The proper job of a satirist, the proper job of a cartoonist, the proper job of a journalist is to hold the powerful and the rich to account. Charlie Hebdo, Charlie Hebdo's entire purpose and for years has been to further marginalize, further alienate, and further endanger exactly those parts of the community who are already alienated, already endangered. It is a racist, Islamophobic, hypocritical rag. Je ne suis pas Charlie Hebdo. We say that the honor of religious people, their prophets, their beliefs, is not fair game for such people because there are already limits to freedom of speech. I cannot defame, libel anybody in this crowd other than being ready to face a court and condign punishment. I cannot incite racism from this platform, and rightly so. I cannot incite hatred of any kind. I cannot say things which are likely to lead to aggression or crime against any group in society. No one can shout fire in a darkened cinema because their right of freedom of speech to shout fire is trumped by the right of the people in the cinema not to be trampled and killed in the resultant panic. Well, when you do the pornographic, obscene provocations like Hebdo did every week and now has done in millions of copies, you're doing the same as the inciter. You're doing the same as the dangerous man sh falsely shouting fire in that darkened cinema. So for the sake of social peace, for the sake of unity in our society, we have to demand from our government the protection of the prophets from obscene and pornographic provocation and in parliament I intend to fight for that. Wassalamu alaikum. Thank you very much.